Okay, good afternoon. Uh, we're doing a quick recording here of sector situation, filling in for uh, Mr. Razzi uh, as he is traveling, heading off to our RebelCon uh, this weekend. Uh, and let's just uh, get into this, uh, do a quick disclaimers here and we can get going. Okay, I'm gonna one first off just apologize for the slight differential in uh, how I'm going to do it versus how kind of Wayne has been handling this. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of run through some of the sectors and see how these things are looking in comparison to each other's. And um, you know, we'll start off with one of the better ones here that has been uh, doing very well, obviously in a in a market that has been drifting lower and uh, people looking for flight to safety, the utilities uh, have been that that location. But obviously, there's a little bit of a hangover from uh, from Europe and problems there in terms of uh, what could unfold here. And uh, you know, definitely one we have to be aware of. Utilities are great for for a kind of place to put your money and hopefully collect the dividend off of, but. We'll have to see if that's going to be able to hold up. It does look a little bit scary here with the big pullback. Obviously, the market had extreme selling, so everything kind of gets sold into once that happens. But uh, out of all of the ones that we were going to look at, this seems to be the best, given that it is closer to the proximity of the high and comparatively to the low. So this is on the upper end of this. So the market does give us a little bit of a turn. Maybe we can get a little bit of a push back up towards the high on this. So that is the XLU working away in kind of the same mindset, XLE, which is the energy. We did have a small pull off here in crude, and obviously that has got to play a factor here in terms of uh, what's going on. So the energy kind of having this uh, downtrend here in terms of crude, we're still doing okay in terms of the XLE, in terms of that uh, broader picture. So uh, X, the, the, the crude pulling off, taking out lows would definitely be concerning in terms of the bigger picture now that the current administration has, I don't want to say exhausted, but, but really put a lot of barrels out of our, uh, the U S reserves, uh, pulled them out. I think we're at like a 35 or 40 year low in terms of what is being held in those reserves. So that is, that has helped. Um, but again, there's been multiple calls here from uh, like JP Morgan calling for a million barrel cut from OPEC. So we'll see what OPEC comes at, back with. Uh, I don't know what their time frame is, what would be on that. But if anything gets announced, something like that, we could see a pop here. And also in that XM, uh, sorry, XLE in terms of that energy. So maybe we do get a little bit turn there. So you do have the 50 and the 200 down below that. Uh, working our way up in terms of proximities of uh, kind of where we are, uh, I'm using kind of two levels. One is this area in here, which is roughly this, uh, the beginning of September, and then coming back into June, right, where we had this big sell-off and, and, you know, things got really ugly across the board here. So the XLV, which is the healthcare sector, this has been kind of in the middle of the range. So I'd still be using something like this as maybe a catalyst to the downside, um, using maybe the 150 right up above it, if that could start to spark again, market moving back up uh, to the upside. Consumer discretionaries still holding, uh, fighting in between the 100 and the 50. So you can see that orange line, which is the 50 and the 100 down below it. Uh, that 100 getting pretty close down here to these lower levels. We'll have to see any further drop down below that. And these swing lows would be uh, very concerning in terms of the bigger picture, in terms of what can unfold. Again, coming back into that June uh, June lows right in here. We're still in kind of a, a bigger picture uh, higher lows at the moment. So we can get back above the 50, maybe retest the big gap down that we had the start of the week would definitely be something to be aware of. Um, the XLF, again, with what's going on in rates, typically you would see a market that would, um, or an, a, a banking sector that would start to move back up, but this is causing maybe a little bit more uh, problems than we are seeing. Uh, JP Morgan and Bank of America came out last week and said uh, to the extent that their revenues will be down in certain divisions down by 50 percent so never a good sign when you start to see that that means things are drying up liquidity is being pulled out of the market and no one's really interested in taking loans so that is a little bit concerning there so taking out the lows in these not quite there yet but you can see the proximity to to both of these lows 
uh, kind of holding its own in terms of uh, rates, but rates on Wednesday, 2 p.m. is going to be the, the critical factor for uh, especially this sector, but pretty much the entire market at this point. Um, working our way back, right, we can see uh, the XLK maybe a little bit worse off on this list uh, than a lot of these other ones because we are down below the swing low from our beginning of September, working our way back into this area down here in terms of these lows. So we did have a pretty ugly looking low that did manage to to close it higher on the day, did come back up and fill the gap. So that's interesting. Uh, but still, these lows will be the ones that you're going to want to pay attention to taking out um, the low of the day starting to test retest swing lows here 122.47 on that could be uh, very problematic in terms of the bigger picture. Um, getting back into real estate, you can see why this one may be slightly better, kind of a little bit more defined in terms of its levels, but um, in terms of the action here, this did come down to retest. I think it actually did make a slightly lower low than back in here. So 38.63 would kind of be your bigger OS level if this thing does start to break. So I definitely think you have to be concerned with this along with the home builders doesn't look as bad as the uh, real estate ETF. Again, you know, maybe because some of these home builders are actually in, in decent shape compared to where they've been historically. They've been able to, uh, you know, get out ahead of this, get in front of this. They could see what was coming. Um, the, the prices they were able to charge in terms of their margins with all of these squeezes going on in terms of commodities, the, you know, mainly lumber, and then you get into copper and all these different pieces that are, that are components they're able to squeeze some margins. So I've seen several reports where home builders are actually better off, uh, much better off now than they were back in uh, 2006, 2007, 2008. So uh, again, that being said, maybe that's why we're not seeing as much in, versus the RE, the real estate uh, area. So definitely would keep an eye on this. Still very bearish in terms of the bigger picture as interest rates are now um, spiking mortgages. Mortgages are, I saw a rate up at 6.35, but on average, you're definitely up over six here at the moment. So that's definitely one I think is going to play a big factor in terms of being able to afford homes. So that is going to be maybe a, a potential slowdown. Prices we're already seeing drop and we're going to see how much further they will go. Working our way back into consumer staples. Again, you can see kind of the ugliness unfolding here. And um, you can see where this has tested in the past. So we have broken kind of this area in here. Um, and now you really only have kind of two swing lows here, at least from the, the prior year, to really start to, to bank against. Again, from a consumer staples perspective, um, hopefully we can get a little bit, little bit of stabilization here and uh, move higher. But uh, if we do start to take out lows, you guys are ready to go on, on those areas. Uh, the XLB materials, and this was, uh, and, and surprisingly getting uglier and uglier. Um, we've been watching the, uh, the Alcoa, the Cleveland Cliffs, and this has just been a very, very ugly trend where they gapped it up on Monday and it's just been red candles all week. So we took out the swing lows back in here and there's really not that much uh, more to fall in terms of taking out this level. Again, if that were to happen, just like what's going on in the metals, um, you know, this is, there. everything's kind of getting hit here. So I don't know if this is a flight to, um, to other names that are down more, getting out of some of these names that haven't really moved like material space and saying, all right, I'm going to move into something that's got a little bit more potential to the upside because it's been beaten down so much more of a rotation type of thing, uh, or it's just the fear that, um, you know, inflation and where dollar is driving some of this stuff down. So we'll have to see how that, um, how this plays out. So, but again, I think back down here, I'd be very cautious of that 69.98 in terms of the bigger level. Um, going back to something like a weekly, you can see we still have some room to drop bigger picture coming back to maybe like a 61-ish in terms of 2019's levels. Uh, going into 2020, I've been kind of using this area as kind of my base point of what is an, a normal market. Now, not saying that is 100% uh, normal, but is kind of before COVID and all that fun stuff. So maybe we do have a little bit of a pullback on that one. So got to be careful there. And let me get back to like a three month. Uh, I think I actually had it on a one year. Did I have it there? Yeah, there we go. So working way up the list, only a few more left, uh, the industrials and 
Uh, again, what an ugly week. Big gap up on Monday, and they tried to push this, and then CPI just did its damage down through the 50, down through the 100, and then another gap down on Friday along with what was going on at FedEx. So uh, this was just absolute ugliness. Now, um, you know, is it a little bit oversold? Of course, right? You're seeing a lot of these down here on the RSI down at the bottom. Volatility hasn't really popped yet, right? But you can see how that has been hovering uh, at an, uh, I would say probably middle of range to maybe, you know, up uh, maybe like 30% in terms of this. So we've been swinging back and forth in, in terms of that range. Um, so this is definitely one I think you have to be aware of that could we see a little bit of a reversal here um, this coming week, right? Can we see some kind of a push here that now that it's kind of getting to this point of oversold? So we'll have to pay attention to that one. Uh, again, coming back to those metals we talked about, uh, is there a, a little bit of a sell-off here in terms of rotation? Um, to me, this is just pretty ugly, right? And you would think where we are in terms of our cycles and where where the rational space would be to be able to buy, uh, you think there'd be a little bit more of a flight to safety, but we're seeing the exact same thing in Bitcoin, right? We're seeing the sell-off where uh, people are taking money off the plate here and rotating out of a lot of these things and moving into to other spaces. So is there more of a growth um, growth potential for what's going on in the market or flight to flight to safety and is there enough interest when you start to think about that flight to safety is there an alternative now to the stock market is there um rates that it can be can you can put your money in where you can be somewhat protected so maybe there's going to be a little bit more of a pull out across the board of the stock market now that interest rates are, are potentially going to be going up this week so we'll have to be watching that um, we'll compare that to the gold and silver uh, index here, the XAU, which is a Philadelphia product. Um, <clears throat> it just doesn't look good, right? We've been in a pretty consistent downtrend looking to find a basin here. I would imagine, again, from the bigger picture of where inflation is, where do we play into um, the, the flight to safety, right? And, and that's typically the metals. So I definitely think you should be you know, looking at that. I would definitely be keeping an eye on something like the SLV or the PSLV in terms of the price of silver and really what's going on. Silver kind of doing slightly better than the, the GLD, right, which has really gotten crushed there. So I think, you know, gold and silver, obviously there's a, a core relationship there, but gold has been overvalued or silver has been undervalued. So silver doing maybe slightly better in terms of that one. Uh, the the last two, which have been the weakest in terms of, I would say, the market overall has been the semis. Uh, and this has been, you know, you're getting closer to your what we've been calling our OS level. Um, and this is getting really, really ugly. And I think this really comes back from the warnings of uh, NVIDIA and uh, uh, Micron, right, in terms of the bigger picture. And now you're seeing the administration come out. Uh, two weeks ago, they talked about a specific high-end chip that can't be shipped to China. And then I believe the week after that, they basically came out and said, well, we're going to expand this to a little bit, but there's really not as much clear definition on what they are uh, restricting quite yet. So that's definitely going to be playing a factor in terms of um, this space, right? When you talk about automatically chopping off the amount of demand that they can can sell to. So you, if you can't sell to China, one of the largest markets in the world, then that really uh, limits the, the potential there in terms of the bigger picture. And then our last one for you guys here is the XLC, which is communications. And we've just seen tremendous weakness here, taking out the lows and really, really starting to get ugly here in terms of the bigger picture on that. If we zoom out a little bit on the weeklies, you can see we're down below that kind of um, benchmark 2019 level, working our way back down into this area. So should have some decent support in here, but keep in mind where your 2020 low was from COVID, right back down in here in terms of the bigger picture. Does that give us a, uh, a, a big drop there in terms of this one? So XLC, obviously, I think it's important to understand what the weights are in this. Um, I believe it's uh, made up a lot of, let me see if I can just quickly look at that, analyze uh, fundamentals. So the big names that are making that up, Meta, and we'll just put this in perspective for you here, Meta, oops, I didn't want to do that, analyze, let me unclick this uh, on link, and come over here to a 
Sorry about that. So Meta makes uh, makes, or I should say, is about 18% of that XLC. So you can see that really got hit this past week and uh, on its way back down to this two, uh, I'm sorry, 137 level. Uh, next big swing low after that's going to be down here around the 123 after that. So uh, that one, then you're looking at um, bigger picture, Google, uh, Google, um, both of those, G-O-G-L and G-O-O-G, uh, plane, right? So those are both pretty, uh, pretty precarious on, on levels there. You can see that on the chart. And here is uh, Google with an L. Uh, and you can see that big consolidation kind of sitting similar to what we just saw in terms of the GOG, the class C shares. Uh, our next one that we had was uh, Netflix. And I'm just going to go down this list real, here real quick. Netflix, Disney, uh, T-Mobile, uh, Activision, Charter Communications, and Comcast, and the Verizon is number 10. So you're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, let's see, those seven, the bottom seven from uh, four to 10 is roughly 4% to 5%. And then Google's uh, Google C is 11%, Google uh, A is 12%, and then Meta is 18%. So you're talking a very large amount of uh, control there in the top 10 stocks on that. So uh, just going to be careful. Some of those bigger names, especially your Meta and your Google. Um, Netflix is, has done pretty well. So I think you should be uh, keeping an eye on that. But that actually had a little bit of a squeeze. Let me take all these lines off. I do apologize. Um, and get back to Netflix, right? So we, as we look at that, this is actually having a little bit of a squeeze here this week, given some positive uh, revenue guidance and an upgrade that was on Friday. So that's uh, been doing well comparatively to the rest of the market. So on that, I to wish you guys good luck with this upcoming week. Wednesday, got to pay attention with Powell, um, obviously what the Fed does, and then what Powell says after that, right? Because if, if he gives enough that he kind of, as we say, um, Sweet talks the market, then maybe we can get a little bit of a short squeeze going into this without any major headlines coming out um, until October. Then you get into uh, your your earnings going into uh, the second week of October is going to start. So that would could be a potential little bit of a rally here if we can stabilize the market Wednesday and they start to squeeze it. So be careful. Um, we do still have negative undertones across the board. We are going to have these these rates increasing and Europe's increasing. So we're going to have a lot of uh, potential for liquidity to keep coming out. And just watch for that next liquidity issue. Don't know what it is. Um, could be a, a, you know, a gray swan or a black swan event that we don't know about. Maybe a hedge fund blowing up on margins or margins continue to get squeezed here. So we'll have to keep an eye on all these things. But I want to wish you guys good luck. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you.